Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Um, but tonight we get to celebrate, you know, it's, every day should be a celebration of giving thanks to our God, right? Um, so we have a special service for, for you guys, and I think sometimes we don't share with people the goodness of God and how awesome he's been, no matter where we've been this year, last year, no matter what trials, tribulations, problems, you name it, no matter where we've been, God has, God is always faithful. He's always faithful to his word, so... I am super excited to say that I am thankful. One of the things that I want to say that I'm th thankful for, I am thankful for your life. I am thankful for our church. I'm thankful for our pastors and elders. I'm thank you, uh, thankful for my family, our staff, our volunteers. Thank you because the name of Jesus is being known and it's resounding. It has an echo. And I believe that we are living in times when people want to hear that our God is good. And so tomorrow we're going to be in Turkey with our family, right, and some family that you might not want to see. Uh, let's just be honest, but we're thankful for those families, right? We're, we're thankful. You know, you have probably some friends, and you're like, oh. But, but aside from that, it's like the enemy always wants us to focus on the negative. Now, God wants to focus on, on the goodness. Hey, thank, I'm thankful that I still have a family. I'm thankful that I still have parents. I'm thankful that I still have friends. And we're, that's where we're going. Uh, so quickly, let us go to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, verse 5 and 16 to 18. I have two uh, different versions, so we get the point. And this is what the Word of God says. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, many times we spend, I have spent a lot of time in my life always asking, what's the will of God? Should I be a missionary in Paris, right? Or should I, you know, should I be a pastor? All those things, you know, those are all good things and they're good prayers. But he says right here, we have enough to know the will of God. His will is that you and I rejoice always. And I want you to know that I'm a, I'm a student of the word. You need to know that your pastor here, Virginia, it's a student of the word. So I did my, my research. And do you know that always in the original version, which is Greek, means always? You guys, it passed it to you. like, Phew. it means always. Like, how can you rejoice always? But it's a command. He's not saying you should rejoice here and there. If the circumstances are favorable for you, rejoice. But if not, it's okay. No, it says rejoice always. And another version says, never stop praying. Do you know that you and I are never to stop praying? And he says, in everything, give thanks. And the Amplified reads it this way, rejoice always and delight in your faith. Have you ever delighted in your faith when you're going through something that is hard? Let's be honest, right? You don't have to tell me. I'm not always have rejoice in circumstances. Uh, this is being unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation, no matter what the circumstances. It says, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, to, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. What is the will of God for you and me in Christ Jesus is that we rejoice always. I don't know about you, but when you are followed into various circumstances, uh, it says to give thanks things in all things you know it's not that we're gonna give things and I'm not talking about okay thank you father for this cancer that you have given me no because that goes against his word he doesn't give cancer he is a life giver but we can say thank you Lord that for this opportunity where I can stand and I can rejoice and he's able to tell us to rejoice you know why he can say to rejoice because the, the kingdom of heaven is within reach it says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which means it already dwells inside of me. It says the kingdom of heaven is within you. So I am able to rejoice. Do I want to rejoice? No. And sometimes we think that, uh, you know, I, I love uh, when people, there's things that it can be imparted to you, right? You can catch 
Some people can pray and their their impartations. What are impartations? Sometimes someone can pray over you and they have a gift of healing and they can say, you know, I'm gonna impart the healing. We all have the power, but then some people can impart that in your life and, and it's in the word. And I thought, God, why didn't you impart a thankful heart? That would have been nice. Right? Wouldn't it be nice that God just imparts you like uh, somebody's imparting new hearts on that? conference over there and if you go there we're gonna lay hands on you and then someone will lay hands on me and say Virginia I am imparting you a grateful heart and you were like voila and you're so thankful right no you know why because God wants us to de develop the muscle of faith he wants us to develop the muscle of faith and rejoicing and being thankful it's not a matter of of you know, an impartation. It's not a matter, matter of someone praying over you. It's not about a matter of you asking me, God, sometimes we have prayers that they don't even line up with this word. God, give me a thankful heart. No, you need to decide that I'm going to be th thankful in my goodness, in a good place, in an ugly place, in an awesome place. I don't know about you, but when it comes to being thankful and rejoicing, it's not even in my number one choice. And I can be like, truthful with you, not even my second choice. It's at the bottom of my list. You know, there is this song. I'm going to go into that. There is this song. It's, 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 a, it's a Hispanic song. I think it's like a salsa or like a cumbia, right? And so um, I'm going to tell you a story and then because I, I tell stories, right? So I'm going to give you a little peek of, 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 of my life, right? And this is just a little tiny bit, right? So we wake up in the morning. Every day we live by faith, which is today, because tomorrow I need hope. I don't need faith, because today is faith is for today, right? Tell them to But you got it, right? And so um, I went to the store yesterday and praised the Lord, right? He says, praise the Lord, thank the Lord always. So I went to the store, and the lines to just get, you know, like sugar, it was like... The line was long, and, and then I was remembering what I was going to preach today, right? Rejoice always, and I can hear rejoice always, and then the more I can hear rejoice, I'm tweaking already, like, you know what? <laughs> like, and so I grabbed all my things, and Isaac was helping me, and he said, Isaac, go get this, go. so I can be in line, right? Because you're going to be there 30 minutes, right? And hey, I'm representing the kingdom of heaven of being thankful, and so I got in my line, and I, I went to the restroom. I looked at myself, and I, can you, Virginia, can you smile? I was like, mm -hmm. right? So I went out, and Isaac was already in line waiting for me. And then so I had, everybody had huge, you know, their grocery, I mean, back, I mean, back. But the cards were, like, loaded, right? And there's this lady in front of me, right? I'm trying to be thankful in all things. Right, and then she turns at me and she's like, oh, I forgot something. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, <clears throat> so she said, can I go get it? And I'm like, <clears throat> I'm representing the church. The body of, this is the will of God for me. <clears throat> Thank you. This is the will of God for me to Hey, show that you there is joy, joy in you. And remember, I'm, I'm preaching on myself in my head. It's at the reach of your hand, Virginia. It's at the reach of your hand. You're just going to hold of it. And so the lady's like, I'm just going to go get a box of whatever. And then I said, do you know what aisle? I'm trying to help her, right? You know what aisle it is? She's like, oh, no, I'll come back right away. And then she tells her, you know, that she was with the kid. And she's like, we forgot this. And I was like, it's half of your grocery list, woman. And I was like, go, go, because tomorrow I'm going to be giving thanks to God. Go. And then I, she went, and then I was like, I can feel, and it wasn't joy. No, I wanted to, you know, imagination is beautiful. I wanted, no, I'm not going to tell you what I wanted to do, but but then I, I thought, you know what, rejoice. What? Okay, okay, I need to rejoice. I need to address my, you know, right now, this, I'm feeling really angry with this woman. And it would be nice to invite her to church. How am I going to invite her to church, right? And you with the face from Sour Bus, right? You're like, you can't. 
And so she's taking forever, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, I heard this song. I don't know if you ever heard it. La vaca, la vaca, la vaca. <laughs> it's, it's a good song to dance, right? Because I thought, there is no way. I'm not feeling any joy. There is no joy in me right now. But then all of a sudden, that, that song hit me. And God always uses secular songs for me. Like, la vaca. And I was like, la vaca, la vaca, la vaca. I kind of did like, you know. And I was like, okay, then when the lady came up, you done with everything? Okay, bless you. Enjoy your family. But it's funny. But do you see, it's simple, but that's just a little thing. I'm talking about living and choosing because it's a choice to be thankful. It's a choice to pray in everything. And the reason, and I'm closing with this, the reason that God wants us to work on that, and it's a commandment. It's the reason is the will of God for you and I to rejoice always, to never stop praying and to give thanks at all times because he wants us to be strong. He wants us to be able to be strong in his might, the might of his power, in his power, because power dwells in us. When we face difficulties in life, he wants us to be strong while we're navigating betrayals, family members and friends. Life, it's that way. He wants us to be able to be strong and choose to rejoice and to pray always and to, in everything, give thanks. He wants us to be strong while facing criticism. People are always going to criticize us, but we can face it with them. And he wants us to mature in him as we continue to live on this earth. He doesn't want us to be weak. But if you and I choose tomorrow, even tonight, you know what? When my family members come, when I see my friends, I'm just going to be so thankful that I have a place to go to. That, hey, maybe you're not eating turkey, maybe you're eating cup of noodles, but you still have cup of noodles. You know, and, and we live with that kind of life, right? So I just want to tell you that I am thankful for you. I know that without your love and support and who he is in my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So I thank you. I thank you for making it tonight, for driving crazy hours just to make it here. And right now I have invited a, 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 a three people to come and share. The people that were chosen is because I have seen them in their good times. I have seen them in their best times. I've seen them in their not so good times. But I'm going to tell you one thing that they have in common is that they have chosen to believe, to rejoice, to never stop seizing, praying, and to never stop seeing all things according to the eyes of Jesus. So I'm going to just invite the first, the first speaker right now. Come up. And then we have. Hi, my name is Ray, and <laughs> so I serve with the uh, prayer team and the intercessors here at Elevate, and I get to see miracles happen every week, and it's pretty awesome. So um, I just want to share what I'm thankful for, um, for what Jesus has done in my life this year. Uh, I started off the year in kind of a spiritual timeout, and um, I was kind of funky about some things and I had gone through a ministry and I'd served on the pastoral team um, at another uh, location and I was uh, still serving in that up until late last year and I had gone through relational healing um, but what the Lord started showing me early in the year was that there was spiritual healing that still needed to happen with that so as I'd made amends with um, the people in my family past relationships um, and just learned really what about um, forgiveness was really about. Um, I had to really start looking at what the Lord wanted to do inside of me. Things from the past, uh, doors that were open, um, that were creating um, a division, uh, not only in me, but in my prayer life. And, um, you know, even a, a, a against the pastors, you know, in my judgments or my um, feelings with that. So I submitted to that process. And um, so the first, you know, part of what he took me through was humility. And um, then he took me into a knowledge. And in through that, um, I was still serving on the prayer team. And I'm watching word after word after word um, just come to truth in people's lives. And it was just amazing to watch how God was working with that through the Reveal ministry and through our prayer team week after week. 
So with that knowledge, I obtained a lot of that in prayer and his purpose for my life, to know that I was in the right place uh, here at Elevate, that I was the right place in the prayer team. And even though I felt like I wasn't worthy of being there, he showed me week after week after week that, yeah, I'm going to use you. I'm going to keep using you. And I kept submitting in prayer. Um, so it was really powerful. And I give thanks to Jesus for that um, because he kept bringing me to the table and he kept meeting me there. So I... I bow down to my face and I put my my lips to my Bible and I kiss it and he kisses it back, kisses me back and I just feel his love pour out on me. So I'm, I'm just grateful for that love. Um, I'm grateful for his wow, his words of wisdom. Um, I get that and just living his ways. Um, I asked him uh, about seven years ago, God, show me your ways and he has and he's faithful in that every single day. Um, understanding and revelation of God's will. If I haven't seen it um, or heard it from pastors, um, he shows me in dreams. Um, I hear it from other people. I see it in testimonies from other people. Um, so with the understanding of his will and his word, um, I'm also led to repentance because I don't want to continue in those ways. So anger issues, things I deal with at work. I was getting hit from every direction this year, but I just stayed in prayer. I stayed serving, and it was glorious. It was just, you know, and I'm a baby and very spirit sensitive, so I, I cry a lot with them, with the Lord, but uh, I love it. Um, and then I found myself in deliverance conferences and ministries, um, just showing up, and we're going to see a speaker, and we find out it's on deliverance. So this is now, you know, event after event after what event my prayerful wife uh, finds and leads us to. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty awesome that when you come out of there, you come out with more information, more knowledge, um, more awareness of what I had to repent of in my life, and the Lord delivered me from that. So as I continued to pray, I get reports in home that my mother has another negative report of no cancer returning. I have a father who um, I put on the board in 2017 that uh, he would come to Christ. When I've talked about Jesus nonstop when I go to see him, um, he gets angry. He's almost growling in the kitchen. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on in there. But <laughs> um, and he said to me the other day, I said, how's your knee doing? He says, well, I can't kneel when I go to church, but I just sit down and I pray. And I was like, praise God. And I just came home and I was just like, thank you. So I'm thankful for that and everything that Jesus is doing here. Because I know in my prayers, um, the fruit of that is right here in front of everyone. And in your hearts, it's in your lives. And God said to me, he says, it's not because of your intercession or because of your giftings. It's because I want to do it. And I love that, you know, and it's, it's what he wants to do is heal us and deliver us socially, spiritually, and to become a healthy body. And I get to live that every day. So I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father and Holy Spirit. Good evening, everyone. Well, Pastor got a hold of me yesterday, and he said, uh, you're going to go ahead and share what, you know, what God has done for you this, this year. Well, you know, once I came back from being unconscious, I got up, <laughs> and I said, you know what? How can I not go and share what God has done for me this year? You know, he's, he, he has been amazing. Well, beep, 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 beep. No. <laughs> no, but, um, oh, the text. Are you sure you got the right person? You know, but I started thinking, you know, how can I not come? It doesn't matter how I feel right now, how much I'm shaking in my boots. Um, but I'm here to tell you that God is good. Um, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit real quick. But let me fast forward. I came here about seven years ago. And I came from a uh, very broken marriage, ended up in a very ugly divorce. And, you know, leaving there, I thought I had lost everything. Now, fast forward again. Four years ago, there was a prophet. I think it was named uh, David Navarro. David Navarro. Anyways, he prophesied on me, and, uh, you know, with many things that he said, he also said that I would recuperate. I would be given back everything that I lost, everything that was taken from me. And um, if, the, if the lip shakes a little bit, I just call it my Elvis. It's I'm a little bit nervous, but it's okay. Well, going back to this year, uh, back in May, my beautiful wife and I celebrated our first anniversary. God has, God has given me an amazing woman. 
a woman of God, a woman who, who loves all like no other. Um, she is my best friend. Um, she does amazing things for us at home now that my son is back. Um, you know, he, she's an amazing woman. I just want to thank you also for taking on the, the responsibility now as a mother. You're, you're, you're amazing at that too, man. Um, that's one thing I'm, I'm so grateful for this year. Number two, oh, let the lips slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Number two is my son is back. He is back. He was serving our country five years in the Marine Corps, Semper Fi. Um, he is back now. Every day I would pray, you know, Father, bring him back safe. Bring him back safe. You know, bring him back healthy, uh, physically, mentally. Well, he was always a little crazy, but he, he's, he's good. So now he's back. But where I'm truly blessed now is to see that he's uh, right away he started serving this house. Um, and it wasn't a thing that we sat down with him that in this house we serve God. It was his own thing. He, he's done it on his own. He's here painting. And, and, you know, I wake up early in the morning. Where are you going? I'm going to go serve. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you do it, you know. <laughs> and what that does is makes me keep, you know, on my toes, too, because I have to be the, the leader. I have to be the one who, you know, is just continues to show him how it's done and to show him how a father and a husband, you know, treats his wife. And then uh, number three. I'm going to try and go kind of, well, I'm going a little too fast. But number three is we were praying for a, for a home, and uh, for a whole year we were actually looking for a home. And our prayer was always that it's a home that um, not something that we can actually get by, you know, from what we have in our finances, but this is going to be a home that um, is given to us by you and that you are giving us this gift. And we looked for a whole year, and we knew that, our house just was not ready. Well, this May also, um, we moved into our new home. And the way it happened, you know, you could see that God's hand was all over it. He orchestrated everything from the beginning to the end. Now, I'm not here to, to brag on this house because what I am here to brag on is God. You know, going back to what the prophet said, that I would be given back everything that I had lost. Now, it was an adventure. Like Pastor said, that, you know, it was some good and the bad all through there. And it was years. But, you know, in the end, he comes back. He comes through. He comes through. You know, the, the, they say, you know, he's never early. He's never late. But he's always on time. So that's where it's at right now. You know, every time I drive up to my house now, it's not what I have done, what I have bought. It's it's just the, you know, the the what God has given us, what God's, his, uh, what is it, his, his, what he has, what did he told me that he was going to give me? And that's what I see. And I just want to tell you that if you're, um, you know, whatever issues you're having, um, and if you don't see it right away, it's God's timing. So hold on, continue to pray, continue to walk with him, continue to, to be in his word, and it will come to pass. Okay? Thank you. Hello, my name is Rena Chen. Um, this is really scary for me. Um, I just have to be honest. So when I, the first boy that you saw in the video um, of the kids actually was my son, and I, I did, I did make him do the video. Um, but then that afternoon, Pastor Regina texts me and she said, "Rena, do you want to? I want. Can you share what you're thankful for?" And then I was like, "Oh my gosh, Elijah, Pastor Virginia wants me to share it at church tomorrow." And he's like, "You have to do it because you made me do it." And and he and he's holding like a dirty um, plate and he goes, "Because the power of Christ compels you." And he's like splashing dirty dishwater on my face and so I'm like, "Okay, fine." Um, so I had to do it because I'm teaching him to be brave, right, and to, to obey the Lord and do things scared. And so, and he's thankful because he's going to share that he's thankful. Like, I'm going to share that I'm thankful. Um, what has God done for me this year? I, I, I'm still struggling with it in my mind because God has done so much for me this year. And 
just so much I, I can't really pinpoint exactly what what it is that he wants to share with you, but I'm just going to keep talking. So um, he's he's done a lot of healing in me. He's he's done a lot of healing in me. Um, the past five to six years have been really hard on on me and my family. And um, I think it, it did start with the death of my brother. And so that it was very traumatic. It was, um, he was very depressed. And to make a long story shorter, <laughs> um, it just, it caused a lot of fears in me. And it, it made all the issues in myself and in my marriage just blow up. So, um, but God is faithful, and he, through the process of these past five years, I mean, we, we've been here at Elevate for about five years, and a lot of healing in our relationships from, from me and my husband um, in, in our marriage. One thing that I do have to say that God has healed my husband of lifelong depression, and that I am truly grateful. Like, that's just amazing to me. I can't imagine living because I know what it's like to be depressed but to be depressed for a long time that's just I yeah God is good God is good and um he's just blessed me with a lot it, I he's healed my heart towards friendships like Ray has just that relational healing he's healed um my family of just the the sadness and the grieving he's taught me how to grieve he taught me how to grieve well. I think as a as a culture, we we don't grieve well, um, and part of that is being thankful, thankful in um, just knowing that that God has a purpose for everything. He's healed me from bad mindsets, from from fears, from being on stage. <laughs> um, he stretched me a lot. He stretched me being on the prayer team. I, I get to serve with Ray, and um, it's scary. It's scary when he calls you to things and you don't want to do it. But to do it, to do it because he says he's good, and to do it because he says he's faithful, and to to take him at his word, and to pray that prayer and say, for your name's sake, and to to take every situation and apply one of God has many names and to apply every single name of his in every single situation that that takes courage and that takes faith and that's what he he's been bringing me through and so um I'm just in awe of the Lord because he he is the God of breakthroughs and in even in our marriage I, I don't know if I should share this um <laughs> Yeah, he's right there. He's, uh, <laughs> even in those times when we're, like, arguing, you know, those little victories of, like, I, this isn't going nowhere. God, in my head, I'm, this is not going anywhere, and I'm just going to not say anything because you you have to fix it, God. You know, you, you promised. You promised that we're not, we're new, and we're not going to go back, and the enemy is a liar, and I'm just going to believe you because you said, and so, because you said so, and and every promise, every word that he's given us, you know, he's come through. And we we bought a house that was a that's a whole nother story. <laughs> like Carl said, that's a whole nother story for and testimony, and and it's scary. And um, yeah, I'm just super thankful. I don't know what else to say, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rena. Can we give them all a big hand one more time? These guys are amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And they got amazing spouses. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, tr we're truly grateful and thankful for, for this house, for every single one of you that we have the opportunity to do life with. I know that some of you just may have got here to Elevate Church. Um, and many of you have been with us for anywhere from three to five to to eight years and and i've seen the change in all these different families i've seen them at their lowest points i've seen them in their highest points i've seen them seen them in their midpoints i've seen them in the deserts i've seen them on the mountaintops i've seen them drowning and and uh, i think we've we've all experienced that but there's nothing more powerful than when you have an amazing church family that can stand 
by you, that can support you, lift you up. But I want to I want to make a statement to you. I want to sum up everything that was said tonight. Uh, thank you. Everybody say this with me. Say gratitude is not gratitude until it's outwardly expressed. Say it again. Gratitude is not gratitude until it's outwardly expressed. There is no such thing as thankfulness until it's expressed with true gratitude. You ready? Quickly. We're going to do communion, but let me read you a verse. The story of the ten lepers is where I drew this from. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the um, border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men, ever say ten men. So I don't know how many people are here, but just imagine a bunch of us. Ten men who had leprosy met him. So they were going through a tough time. They were going through challenges, sickness, disease. And, and if you understand leprosy, leprosy is the most painful disease you can have. Literally, your, your skin falls off your bones. It's, it's, it smells. It's, it's horrible. And they stood at a distance. And the reason they stood at a distance is because if you had leprosy, you were no longer um, allowed to be a part of your family, your community. So they had to stay from a distance as they saw Jesus walking by. And they called out in a loud voice and said, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back, praising, ever say praising God. Praising God. Say it loud. Ready? One, two, three. God. He was doing what? Praising God. Okay. He was praising God. in a loud voice and he threw himself at Jesus feet and did what and did what and he was a Samaritan and Jesus asked in other words Samaritans didn't have anything to honestly do with 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 uh, Israelites and so for a Samaritan to come back and say thank you is unheard of that's like that's like going to war and you're expecting your enemy to show up in the morning before you go out to battle and to thank you for being in their country it just doesn't it just doesn't happen so that's why this part of the story jesus is a little bit shocked he says and 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 he was a samaritan and jesus asked uh we're not all 10 cleansed we're not all of you touched by me we're not all of you healed where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. That means that one out of ten people in the body of Christ actually know how to have gratitude with true expression. Do you know that when you come to church, when you worship, there's an expression that we give to God as gratitude. I know that some people are challenged, and I'm not here to condemn anyone, but sometimes we're challenged with worship or we're challenged with singing or we're challenged with expressing how we truly feel about God because we're so consumed with, 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 our, with our challenge, with our problem, with our issues that it literally distracts us from being free. Think about it. He asked the one guy, Weren't there 10 of you? Where's the other nine? You know what? The other nine were grateful. Here's the problem. They were grateful to the point where they said, wow, I'm so grateful. I, I can't wait to go see my wife. And so one went to go see his wife. The other one said, wow, man, I'm healed. I'm so grateful. I can't wait to go see my kids. And he ran to go see his kids. And the other person said, wow, I'm so grateful. I can't wait to go have a Thanksgiving dinner. And he ran to Thanksgiving dinner. The other one said, I'm so grateful. I can't wait to go back to my career, my business, whatever it is. And so, yeah, they may have been grateful, but they didn't put God first. And I think if we're not careful, we can also be like the nine and not like the one. Because Jesus was very concerned, like, wait a minute, I, I knew 10 of you were here when I, when, I, when I showed up on the scene, but only you came back, and I'm concerned, where are the other nine? 
And when you look at this story, that only one out of ten people actually understand the reality, the, the reality that, that gratitude is not gratitude until it's fully expressed. What does that mean? Think, think this. Um, Ray, stand up. Play Jesus for me. Come up here. Just be Jesus. Up here on the stage, quickly. And just throw your hair back. <laughs> and so, so the, the man, the one, the one, he looks at himself. And, and, and he got a revelation of what true thankfulness is. I, I pray that we get a, that we would get a revelation of of not just being thankful, but having a gratitude that expresses how thankful we are to a God who heals, to a God who does exceedingly abundantly above. And I know people, listen, at Elevate Church, it was a wild year. It's been an amazing year. A lot of people have bought houses here. It's been amazing, like houses beyond what, what like you said, like, man, I'm believing God for a house that is beyond what I can afford, you know, and not that they're getting in debt. But all these people have bought in like, golly, ginormous homes. They're like, wow, amazing. But, it, but it's, it's not just being, thanks, God. But there's an expression, each one of them served in the house of God. Each one of them not only serve in the house of God, each one of them are generous to the house of God. Each one of them are willing to go above and beyond to help other people that are going through stuff, that are going through pain, that are going through suffering. People in this church, people outside this church. Why? Because they've learned to express their gratitude. The Bible says that when, when, when this man realized that he was, he was healed, he, he couldn't just say, thank you and let's go and go see my family. He said, I got to go put God first. What's the first thing he did? He ran to Jesus. But check this out. He didn't just ran and just said, hey, thanks a lot, man. I feel so much better now. Uh, I appreciate it. Bye. See you later. And I think sometimes in Sunday church or Wednesday church or even during the week, we wake up and we're like, hey, God, what's up? And then we just kind of like there's a, a gratefulness, but there's no gratitude of expression. The man threw himself at the feet of Jesus face down and he's just like thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank and Jesus is just like hey dude wasn't there like like 10 of you where's the other nine and he's like oh, I don't know man I just know one thing I am so grateful for you thank you so much for healing me thank you for restoring me and what's the first thing Jesus says to him he says rise up your faith has made you well Jesus was so moved by the attitude of gratitude by the expression of gratitude. And I know, thank you so much. And I know that, that many times when we're going through, and I love the verse that you read, babe, it's, it says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So do you realize that in whatever circumstance you find yourself in, we are to learn how to express a gratitude attitude that regardless of what we're facing, what, what maybe there's a delay in your life. I, I posted something today on, on uh, because I know that many times we're so positive on like we're thankful of, I'm thankful for my wife, I'm thankful for my children, I'm thankful for my job. And that's cool. I'm so happy for that. That's awesome. But I posted something today to kind of flip it on people, but I flipped it on myself. Have you ever traveled, and I, because I travel a lot sometimes, you know, my flight's on time. Other times my flight's on delay. And, uh, and then other times my flight's on time again. And other times my flight's been canceled. And I, I thought to myself, I'm so glad that there have been times in my life where things I wanted so bad were canceled because just maybe God was protecting me from something he didn't want me to have. And we can be so thankful for the things we have, but sometimes we need to be thankful for the things that have been canceled. He not only canceled your sickness and your disease, he not only cancer, canceled cancer and, and canceled all kinds of things that you experience, whether it's emotionally, whether it's in depression or whatever, 
But man, I'm thankful that there are some things that I wanted so bad that God said, we're going to cancel that. So I say, in this Thanksgiving, let's thank God for the things that maybe he canceled, that he allowed to be canceled. Let's thank God that maybe in your delay, the only reason you're in delay is not because he's denied you. The only reason you're in delay is because his timing is going to be perfect. Because God forbid you get on that flight and then something happens and you weren't ready. And so let's express this Thanksgiving an attitude of gratitude, but that has an expression that in whatever season we're in, we're going to come to Jesus. And we, man, if you have to throw yourself on the floor, if you have to, whatever, you got to, you go, if you have to serve people in, in the moment where you don't feel like you're being served or loved, you, you do the opposite because you know what? I'm thankful that Jesus is the answer to all my problems. Amen. But we got to show that. We got to express that to him. You get this right now? So we're going to express that tonight with communion. Ushers, has to pass out the communion. We're going to express that with communion. And while they pass that out, let me tell you something. I want you to receive communion tonight in a way where you're saying, God, I, I'm reminded of what you did for me on that cross. I'm reminded that you were shredded on that cross. Your, your, your body was broken so that mine could be whole. Your, your blood was shed so that I can be forgiven of all my sins, past, present, future. Jesus, thank you that you didn't give up, that you didn't quit, that you didn't let fear grip you or paralyze you, but you finished the good work that you begun. And that good work has begun in me, amen, in you in all of us and we just have to say Jesus thank you maybe right now you're you're struggling in your family or financially or in health you know what how about not just Thanksgiving how about tonight we just go ahead and we change change our attitude and you know what on Sunday if you weren't here we had a mom whose son has had uh, some type of lymphoma it's like in the, in, 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 the, in the bones, and it's cancer. And, and of course, if you were here, um, we heard the story in March. Lori went there with some other of our prayer team people. They, they prayed for him, and he wasn't doing too well. Uh, his whole body lit up like, like a Christmas tree, cancer in all his cells. And then came um, October or November. And they had kept praying for him. And then he was here. He'd been wanting to come to church. He even sent me a video through Lori, you know, telling me, thank you, Pastor. And I mean, just a smart little kid, brilliant kid. And he'd been wanting to come to church to be thankful, to be grateful. Like he wanted to express it by being in the church. A video was not good enough. And he kept bugging his mom, mom, I want to go to church. But he couldn't because of his health, right? His, his immune system is so weak. But guess what? On Sunday, he stood on this platform and he came because he wanted to be thankful and testify and thank a church who had been praying for him. And he said, I want you to know today that I had, I had another x-ray or another, uh, what's that thing called, a um, MIR. And he said, and I'm cancer free. I love that. That's an expression. And we're talking, how old, how old is Diego? He's 10 years old. A 10-year-old kid was the one that came back. I wish I could tell you that he's fully recovered. He's not. His body's weak. His immune system is low. But he who has begun a good work in him, the Lord will finish that work in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. You don't have to have cancer in order for God to do a miracle in your life or to heal you or restore you. Wherever you're at right now, God is also going to finish the work in your life. Whatever it is, maybe you're believing God for that home. Maybe you're believing God for that career. Maybe you're believing God for that healing, that restoration. Maybe you're believing God for that child to come back to God. It doesn't matter what it is. You know what matters? Is that we have to express our attitude of gratitude with a full expression like this one man who came and threw his face to the ground. Maybe tonight you should throw your face to the ground first before you meet your family tomorrow morning. Put your face to the floor. And you just start saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being on time. Thank you for things being delayed. And thank you for canceling some things that I may not even know about. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then Jesus will say to you, you know what? Why don't you just rise up? <laughs> Go because your faith has made you well. Amen.
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.